family planning. First up, we'll welcome Tulip Tree Creamery, a local urban creamery that will make you want to eat your weight in cheese, truly. Uh, then we'll catch up with our show mascot, Paul Poutit, as well as we'll finally come around to talk to Family Choice Surrogacy, a company that wants to help educate Indy on all family building options available today. All that and much more on The Edge. Your audio and video source featuring Indianapolis tech trends, marketing industry champions, and business innovation. This is Edge of Indy. Broadcasting from Edge Media Studios. Let's get today's conversation started. All right. Well, welcome back. Hey, uh, if you haven't come across what Edge of Indy is all about, let us let me tell you uh, uh, a, a quick thing. And by the way, my name is Aaron Sparks. I'm the CEO of Site Strategics as well as Edge Media Studios. And we bring this show to you each and every week for local Indianapolis uh, uh, businesses and 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 just to, to be able to show what's going on here in Indianapolis. We focus on local entrepreneurs and businesses, uh, movers, movers and shakers around the city. Uh, we feature people and organizations out there helping make Indianapolis a great place to work, live, and visit. So uh, we constantly promote local and we want you to learn about local often and choose local often. That's what Edge of Indy is all about. So I wanted to introduce myself again. Hey, Aaron Sparks here, but to my <laughs> right, <laughs> I, I did two for there. Um, to my right, we also have Brittany Simpson, who's the, who's the Director of Marketing Services here at Site Strategics. Hi. Hello. There's, there's cheese here. So. There is cheese. We're all distracted by the cheese. <laughs> I am. And, and we also want to introduce our new friend, it's Fons Smith, co-owner of Tulip Tree Creamery. How are we doing, sir? I'm doing great. Excellent. Yes. Thanks for bringing cheese. Yeah. <laughs> He's got that cheesy grin, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, cheese. Yeah! Oh, cheese. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're, we're all, all abuzz about the cheese here. Uh, welcome to the show, and thanks for joining us. Tell us a little bit about Tulip Tree Creamery, as, as Brittany wishes she was actually eating this cheese right yes, now. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, Tulip Tree Creamery, uh, we're a nice, small-scale, uh, hands-on creamery right on the northwest side. We're located in Park 100. Uh, we're in business now for almost four years. And it has been a long time in the making, in a way. You know, mm -hmm. we, we started, uh, I actually came into the U.S. here in Indiana in 2003 mm -hmm. and worked in several creameries and uh, worked with my uh, uh, other, uh, the co-owner, Laura <coughs> Davenport. And, um, you know, that's, uh, we started over there. She did a lot of the sales uh, at Traders Point Creamery. That's where we kind of both started. We moved yep. to, some, uh, to another place in Illinois. We, did, we started up a creamery and then we decided, we decided you know what? I think it's time to uh, do something new. You know, we had to uh, kind of uh, do some new cheeses, new style cheeses. We always, I was always making these big wheels, uh -huh. and I wanted to do something very special. Uh -huh. And uh, got some creative ideas, and and um, yeah, and Laura said, hey, you know, it's nice to say, hey, we make, we have to make this or make that or you know, these nice bloomy rinds, these nice washed rinds, and yeah. create something different on the market in Indiana, which is not out there. So that's how we kind of started, and. And it was kind of the moment. Uh, you know, you have those moments when it, everybody tells you to do it. Right. And if you don't do it, you, know, you have to stop talking about it. <laughs> and that was kind of for us was the same thing. And said, okay, let's let's put it together. We start in a very small little place. Mm -hmm. See if we can kick it off. And, um, and you know, things have been going like crazy. It's been now almost four years. And we're now working on an exp uh, expanding our production. And, and the product has gone from where we just started with some fresh cheeses in uh, only here on the farmer's markets with some spreadable cheeses, some mozzarella. Uh, and afterwards, we started developing some more aged cheeses. And, of course, our our top seller, the Trillium, which is a nice bloomy rind, triple mm -hmm. cream, which is like, that's, you know. That's my favorite. Yeah, and, it, and you know, that's a cheese <laughs> where, you know, it's so nice, delicate, and creamy. It kind of, when it gets totally ripe, it just melts everywhere. You know, oh it's just, Lord. you eat that, and it's just like, and that's our top seller. And it goes everywhere. We now it's so incredible that as a small little business, we ship that all the way to L.A. You know, we have people there going into stores and buy our products. We hit, we ship it to New York and New Jersey and oh, Chicago wow. and, all, of course, all over here and, and in, in, the, in the indie area. Mm -hmm. You know, it's great to hear the chefs uh, here in Indianapolis uh, reacting to our quality of the products and, and love to work with it. And uh, those are kind of great things. So it inspires us also to do more things. You know, we, we love to work on new products and see what we come up with because how we how we work with that. So now it's, yeah, it's almost already four years uh, and we keep growing. And, um, yeah, we'd love to keep going with these kind of products, mm -hmm. work on new stuff. 
And then at the same time, we always wanted to do some with education as well. So that's what a big part of what we really want to do too is besides making all these great cheeses, mm -hmm. actually educate people about these cheeses and, and talk about them and teach them. So people can actually come in and, and, and we show them and we teach them how to make some of these great cheeses. We are such so. an uncultured group of, of you speak for yourself <laughs> of society when it gets down to to to, to knowledge about cheese right I'm quite I mean, cultured when it comes to cheese okay see, she's in it too see it's a dual pun right there um <laughs> but uh, uh, there are some 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 basics that everybody knows but there's such a a um a, a, a range of flavors and such a range of cheeses and different textures right yeah and it totally it's totally like that it's and and you know, and people are always amazed how much science it is. Mm -hmm. and, and when we, t we tell people about it, you know, cheese making is very much the same basic steps. Mm -hmm. But to get to all these different flavors, you just have to change tiny little things in there. You yep. change different cultures, which create different flavors, your different temperatures, different times. And then, you know, a big factor, of course, is the person who actually makes it. You know, and those are the kind of big things. You The little nuances which you put into the process right. to, to make it. And that's how it comes out. And then then making it is only one part of it. And then it actually comes down to taking care of it, the avinage. You're taking care of the cheeses. Oh, what's that word? Avinage. You know, it's just taking care of the cheeses to kind of make them bloom, you know. Huh. And uh, so like the cheeses, like we have the Bloomy Rides, a Trillium, you know, they after I make them, they go into the aging rooms for, let's say, about two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. And that's where our, our affineur, Stephanie, she takes care of them and she... Uh, she makes sure that they're being turned all the time. And when they're ready, they're, you know, being issued to sales. And doing that all just right, that makes them just perfect. So it's it's more than a science. It's a, a science plus art. Plus yeah. magic. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's it's a lot of passion has to go in. You know, you cannot do this as a small-scale business. Uh, you know, it's, it's really an artisan profession. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the passion for it, you're not motivated to it, People will actually taste it because everything what we do it's a handcrafted job. You know, how we make... does one become a what? What does Stephanie do? What is that? She's an affineur. Affin. How? What is that? How do I do that? How do I become that? Yeah, it's it's. <laughs> I think over here, I I don't know. I don't think there's actually like a fixed course anywhere where you can do that. There are a couple of, uh, you know, places where you can do a course for uh, you know, like a couple of days. Usually it's related to some kind of cheese making organization or something mm -hmm. like that. But maybe Stephanie can teach me. Yeah, you know, and <laughs> like there is one where you can, where they actually you can sign up and you go to France for a week. You know, something like that. I, but it, I'm sorry, <laughs> I have to go to France for a week to train. Gotta Stephanie learn. Gotta learn hit the books. How yeah. to make cheese. But but it's a lot of times with this kind of uh, th these kind of things. It's it's a self thought thing. And and for me, it all started a little different. When, when I grew up in Holland, you know, I actually studied food science for seven years and specialized in dairy processing mm -hmm. and did that for a long time. And of course, like that, it's it's still, you learn a lot of the theory. It's a whole different thing than actually when you have to practice that and put it in, you know, and, and going busy with that. But then the 25 years after that, you know, when I spent my time in the dairy industry and I kind of stayed always with the small skill. Right. I really liked that. Uh, I like that contact with, you know, actually putting my hands in the milk and just working with that. And right. then at the end, getting a product and move that on to the customer and hearing the reaction of it. And most of the time, that's positive. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, of course, also people prefer something else, <laughs> you know. And it's it's a great thing. And uh, and you just have to learn. And, and every time, like now even this winter, uh, I learned a lot about uh, the, the, the changes in the milk and how, effect, how much of an effect that had on our cheeses. So... Although you have spent so many years working with it, learning never stops. I had no idea. Yeah. So much was involved in the cheese that I love so much. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, and those are the kind of things too, which we like to tell people when they come and and do the classes with us. We we guide them through. You know, they do the class, but we show them where, where we actually make the products. We right. we show them the aging rooms and and all the work which goes into it. And like that's a big thing. Like with the wash strand cheeses, you know, those cheeses are being like washed three times, turned. You know, so if you start counting how many times it goes through somebody's hand after me, then, you know, three times per week. Now, so you're looking at nine times in the aging room, and then it actually has to be packed before it actually goes into the market. Wow. So it, there's a lot of dedication has to go into that to actually present that product. Now, you hmm. s lived in Holland. You're from Holland. How in the world did you end up in the middle of Indiana working for an urban creamery? 
Yeah. Like, it's been, what's that journey been like? Yeah, you're it, a long way from home. <laughs> it's been a long way. And uh, it's kind of a nice, it's been a long, uh, nice uh, travel experience in a way. And um, yeah, I, like I said, I grew up uh, in Holland in the northern part in the province of Friesland, which is officially part of the Netherlands. And um, and yeah, kind of for my part, what I wanted to do is get my work experience outside the Netherlands. So that's how I started traveling. My first was actually with a cheesemaker in uh, California. And that was kind of to test myself to see if like owning a small cheese making facility would be something for me. Hmm. And after one year, I said, yes, that is something for me. <laughs> and uh, But I was not ready to do that at that sure. point. And uh, so then uh, I went back to Holland and uh, went to uh, Africa for five years, worked in a Dutch development project on, in East uh, Tanzania in a, call, in a city called Tanga. Wow. Where, That's incredible. And, you know, it was great. It was an amazing lesson, which I've learned over there for, I was managing the co-op mm -hmm. and halfway my time, we also started setting up a dairy processing plant. And we developed this whole infrastructure for all these farmers about collecting milk and making sure they had a market and processing it. And now that processing mm. plant we started actually has become the biggest plant in Tanzania. Oh, my gosh. So it has gosh. been really a great way how you can you know work with that, but also actually how to deal with simple little problems because you have to think in a very different way how to fix things. Mm -hmm. And so after about five, six years there, I had too many times malaria, so I had to kind of say, hey, I have to do something different. <laughs> and, um, and then I came, um, uh, I went back to California. And um, and uh, at that time I stayed with, uh, at that time my girlfriend and uh, now my wife, Eileen, and we actually met in California, the first time when I was working for a Dutch cheesemaker on the farmer's market selling cheese. Hmm. and uh, Cheese brings people together. Exactly. It doesn't yeah. matter where you are in the world. <laughs> and so then, um, so I worked with a small creamery in Point Reyes mm -hmm. and developed some great cheeses for them. Uh, it was kind of a way to test myself about the handcrafted parts uh, of cheese making. I really liked that. Went back to Holland, become a, became an international consultant, traveled more around the world to a lot of different oh, countries. Hold on. Uh, you, go, back, go, to, go to Holland and then be, become an international consultant. Whoa. Yeah. In How one do sentence. I do that? <laughs> <laughs> Seems pretty big jump there. Pons. Yes, I, I know. It was, you know, we were looking at, it was great living in California. Uh, it was a beautiful area. Where in California were you? I was right in uh, San Francisco. And we just got back from San Francisco, and it, I loved it. Yeah, it's just so amazing. And uh, But, you know, when we were doing kind of the math and the finances, it just became too difficult to say, you know what, actually to live there yeah. and as a simple cheesemaker, yeah. there was no way. So, and I was offered a job in Holland in a consulting company and was able to get a house in our village where I grew up, uh, close to my parents. So it was just like, okay, that's uh, you know, that's an easy way. And uh, <laughs> so did that for two years. And then an opportunity came along to help uh, the creamery here in the Traders Point Creamery. Mm -hmm. When they started up, they were looking for somebody. And they had a friend who came from the same area in the Netherlands as I am. So we kind of connected. Small world, right? And I came <laughs> over, you know, and three months I was going to go here. I was going to be here for three months. And three months became like five years. And then, yeah, that's how it all started. And you know, and Indiana is such a great place because, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of people think, why Indiana? And mm -hmm. But I think Indiana is such a nice place that it's like, especially for the food right now, there is so much going on. You know, we love it because we see it with the nice restaurants popping up. Uh, when I came in here, um, there was not even one Whole Foods mm -hmm. in Indiana. Right. Of course, now you see that development. There is a, people are very interested in, in new foods, yeah. in exploring, exploring yeah. the food sector. You know, new things, not anymore the standard types of cheeses or standard types of beer or whatever. It's all about the new stuff. And what do you do with that? And on top of that, what you see is that there's a lot more interaction between the different uh, producers. Like, like one of the cheeses we make is our hops, which is a beer cheese. And we, what we do with that is we actually, it's a double cream. It's great. It's a great snack cheese. Uh, kids love it too. And we actually use uh, beer from local brewers, and we incorporate that into the process. Hmm. That's and, awesome. And we do that. We, we mix that. We, it's not always the same one. No, we use it from a lot of different brewers. I cannot even remember how big the list is right now. Oh, very cool. You know, it's those kind of things. And um, so I, for us, it's really nice. And as a developing uh, company, it's so easy to get our products to the east and the west coast where we have distribution. So it's right in the center. Logistical-wise, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it works great. And uh, so looking at that, the developing food sector right here in Indianapolis, mm -hmm. you know, a market like that, plus having access to the outside, 
to ni- big urban areas. Yeah, it just makes makes very much sense. And yeah, no, the, the growth of Indianapolis. I mean, I, I, it could almost be said that we're starting to rival Chicago in the diversity of 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 um, uh, our restaurants and the diversity of of some some unique. Uh, 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 um, culinary arts such as yourself right yep. um you're we're seeing we're interviewing and talking to so many uh unique um uh, entrepreneurs that are bringing that type of artisanship and and investing in indianapolis and we really do appreciate uh, appreciate that because it brings everybody's yep. education of of uh, uh, the food and spirits realm uh you know to a much yep. higher degree yeah, no, I, I totally agree, and and it makes it very interesting, makes it very exciting. You know, like uh, we ha- I had one employee uh, this weekend who, uh, who her boyfriend works in a local restaurant, mm-hmm. Milk Tooth, and uh, yeah, yeah. you know, she brought back this nice little pastry, and they incorporated our foxglove into it. It was delicious. You know, uh-huh. and I, best I, dessert you've ever had. Yes, and but those are the kind you're of things you're not biased that, at all. No, <laughs> but but it's like those kind of things. It's like even things which we don't even think about. Yeah. Like we had a place where they used some of our cheeses in ice cream. Mm-hmm. You know stuff. Yeah. Oh. You know stuff where we don't even think about. Wow. But then others start messing with that, and they start making nice, great things. Yep. And it's so interesting to see that going on. You know. And uh, so it's fascinating. And um, it, he's an ice cream. That just so, brings, yeah. brings a tear to my <laughs> eye. I can't yeah. even think about that. And, you know, and there is something about food. You know, it's always great. You know, if you make a product, you can give it to people. People can enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And it's it's such a nice thing. And and most of the time, people really appreciate it. You know, uh, like if we go somewhere, if we go to a party or something, yeah, we cannot go without cheese. Yeah, yeah. kind of okay. kind so of assumed. It yeah. goes without, do you eat cheese every day? Yes. You do? Yeah. Your own cheese? Or just um, cheese, just all I, the cheese. We, we, I taste a lot of our cheese during the day because, you know, making it and tasting it. We taste every cheese before it's being packed. Mm-hmm. You know, we have uh, most of the time that's Stephanie. What a tough uh, job. So, yeah, it's very tough. <laughs> And uh, it's it's sometimes it's heartbreaking when we have to say you know what that, we're not going to use it we're not going to put this not on the quite, market not quite you know? right yeah yeah or you know it's just not up to the quality which we want That's right and um, I had to do that yesterday too where I had to take a couple batches out which I just didn't like and it's not representative of you know what we really want to be and what do you do with those cheeses uh, right now we actually we <laughs> delivers started... them to my house. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we and actually, where could one be at the dumpster behind the... Which yes. dumpster do you put that in? <laughs> yeah, so it's... Uh, we actually, you know, and that's the nice thing, too. As as a company, you know, we also want to be more and more environmental sensitive to yeah. a lot of things. And uh, I think at this point, you cannot do without that. You know, it's such an important part. Right. Um, you know, that starts with our farmer. He's certified humane. Uh, so we we it's very important for us to know that the animals are being treated well. Mm-hmm. You know right. that's the key thing to us. I think we want to have happy cows, and I think most of our customers uh-huh. that's a big thing, and that that's already a big inspiration for me to start working on new products mm-hmm. because you know that the milk is going to be good, and then uh, but also about we're looking at like packaging material. Is it recyclable? Uh, you know we shipped in uh, like last year we sh- we switched from our uh, shipping. Uh, packages from more styrofoam to a kind of compostable material. Oh, cool! And uh, for the way, the cheese way, we uh, I, w- I got in touch with a farmer who's actually picking up our cheese way now and feeds that to the hogs. And happy, happy, happy hogs! hogs. Ha- very happy hogs. So <laughs> they. Uh, and he gets also some of the leftover cheeses, and uh, it was. Oh, funny. I see how you are. I see. How you are. So uh, I got to bring my farm animals, yes. animals, just so I can get animals. some space. <laughs> animals. So, and uh, but he 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 shared with me two weeks ago that when uh, we had some leftover stuff, that uh, yeah, the hogs actually chose to go for the cheese instead of going for the regular food. So that's awesome. Oh, so yeah, they're no, so, du- they're no dummies. <laughs> exactly. So, so Fonz, um, you've had tremendous success without a retail shop and the entrepreneur in me wants to understand and kind of unpack that a little bit um what do you attribute that that successful growth i mean four years is a very short runway for distributing across the entire country wouldn't you agree yeah so so what would you attribute your success uh to in that that small time period i think a big part of it was that we really took time to prep for it uh-huh. we, so we it's not something where we really stepped into this um, immediately uh, you know we really the years of experience which we got um, uh, from both from me and from Laura you know in the sales part and production in the sales part and then the managing of a company uh, really prepped us for focusing in on the key things which are really important and you know sometimes it's so easy to diversify too much mm-hmm. and and lose your focus yep. and and that was a big thing. Well, originally, we had in the plan to kind of set up a retail, 
And, um, and then we, I actually worked with um, uh, some students and about researching that part, if retail, if it actually made sense. What came out of it was that, um, you know, at best we would break even on it. Hmm. And so, well, then you don't want to do That's it. That's not inspiring. No, no. So then I said, okay, you know, let's focus on just making the best product we can. Just huh. focus on that part and supply our distributors who can then supply the restaurants and give them the best service we can. You know, so we can push out that best product instead of, again, you know, trying to make too many things go uh, work. And that was that's the big thing. Mm. So I think that concentration on a few things and then, um, yeah, just the focus and the service. Those are those are the most important parts with that. And, and then really look at the budget. We did this on a very small budget. And one of the biggest things, which really was a surprise to me, and even though managing another startup, mm -hmm. when you do it yourself, it's another. It's a whole different thing. Uh, although it helps if you did it before, but I totally, I, I underestimated how much time it does, mm. how much time it takes to yep. put into getting a business. And it doesn't matter if it's a creamery or another s startup, another whole. Sure. As an owner, you just have to put so much extra time into getting this thing going because it's the only place where you can save money too. Right. And um, I thought I could do some extra things next to it. No way. You know, I'm working 70, 80 hours a week still now. Amen. So <laughs> it's, it's about that. And you have to persevere. You have to, you have, you motivate yourself. It takes the whole family, you know, you, uh, to really have everybody behind you. And, um, you know, and in the end, it will pay off. And you always get setbacks too, you know, those big bills which come in and which you never expected. And, uh, but in the end, you know, it, it will come through and people will see, you know, if you have a good product mm -hmm. and you do it right, typically it will go, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and and stick with it and stick with the good concept. And I think that's how where we are right now. And that's where we are now spending uh, money on expanding our production. And we really pushed it as as long as possible, if, you know, about waiting as long as possible right. to, uh, for this expansion. And now we just have to do it. So we are all about shopping, eating, drinking, supporting local things here on Edge of India, as I'm sure you know. You do the same, and that's something that you've accepted in your business too. Is that you only want to work kind of on the local on the local scale. So you work with that uh, certified humane dairy in Seymour, Indiana. You're yeah. located here in good old Indiana. What what made being local so important to you, or why is that such an important part of your business? It's, I think it's um, one thing is like we really, although I'm from Holland, uh, you know, we really are considering ourselves as an Indiana company. So if you say, hey, I'm an Indiana company, but I'm pulling my milk from. Iowa, mm -hmm. it, it kind of loses its own thing. Sure does, so, yeah. And there are so many small farmers in Indiana who really need support. And, uh, you know, and I've worked with uh, several, and it's it's incredible to see, like, what we, when we make great products and we put it out, and, and, and you show that to the farmer and say, hey, I used your milk to make this product. He's incredibly proud. You know, it's probably he, he will say it's the best cheese you've ever tasted. You know? <laughs> so it's it's a great thing, and Absolutely. and and when you deal with this kind of thing, so it's a very much partnerships where you're looking for, and um and we don't we're not looking at growing our business to extremely big sizes, no, mm -hmm. because at that point we have to start compromising on certain things, which we don't want to do. So we are very much set on you know we want to be a handcrafted company. It makes us special. We want to be an Indiana company, so we source as much as possible from Indiana. Sometimes it doesn't work, and then we have to look. But if other options come along, then yes, we definitely, that's our first choice. And uh, I think it, it just makes sense to do it like that. You know, it's, I think there are too many companies going too far away, and it just loses its special mm -hmm. thing. So. I could not agree more. No, and, that, and that's really at the core of uh, what we try to showcase on the sh on the show. So uh, you're our kind of people, Fonz. Uh, uh, what's your favorite offering? Uh, why, uh, where should people who have tried, who haven't tried Tulip Tree start? Uh, well, it depends a lot. You know, like of course, uh, when we have people coming in the farmers markets, mm -hmm. we have now two winter markets going on, uh, and and, uh, and they can find all that on our website. You know, we the markets which we do, plus mm -hmm. also the stores which we sell. Uh, it's the easiest to go to childrencreamery.com mm -hmm. for that. And um, yeah, it's and typically when people ask, so what kind of cheeses, what kind of flavors are you into? And and some people just have no clue. Mm -hmm. And then we usually start them off on the kind of the mild side. You know, not the heavy strong flavors. And a nice, easygoing flavor, which usually is a big hit, is our top seller, is Trillium. Yeah. You know, it's this nice, creamy sweetness of the cream and just kind of melts away on your you tongue. You realize you're, you're not getting out of here holding Trillium as you walk out the door, <laughs> you know? So, and then we have, like, our spreadable cheese with mm -hmm. the herbs. It's an easy way. It's an easygoing. Uh, 
you know, um, I know my daughter loves it. You know, she she eats away with that. Um, and and then we can usually start exploring a little bit more the stronger flavors. And some people love the, uh, you go into the washed rind cheeses, and those mm -hmm. are stronger, very pungent flavors. Mm -hmm. And the tiger lily has a little bit of a mixture. It's a little bit milder in flavor. Oh, that's uh, a good one, too. I've had that yeah, one. That's I, a really good one. And I really like when it gets almost ripe, it gets this very kind of roasted flavor at the end. I love that. And then you have the foxglove, which is which is more like, a, there's a French you call an ipoise. And ipoise is kind of a washed rind, but it becomes very runny. It's very strong. If you have that in your fridge, you know it. Mm. You know, <laughs> so it's uh, it, that's kind of. But some people love it, and that's the cheese where you love it or you hate it. Yep. There is nothing in between, and um, so and then we have our wheels too. You know, like our beer cheese is an easygoing cheese, and we have an, uh, the nettle cheese is the, a nice fresh cheese where we put some herbs on the outside. It's mm -hmm. a great dessert. I love that on a nice salad. Oh, there you and go. because it kind of melts away, like with it, when you like feta can sometimes be a little firm. Yep. But if you put a nettle on there, our cheese, it just uh, it, like when you bite into it, it just melts away. So it's so it's such a nice thing. And uh, <laughs> I am sitting here suffering not yeah. eating cheese right now. I know. Hey, it's and, and, and good for you because you oh. made me suffer on the chocolate cake. I incident. know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Paybacks are. This <laughs> Um, can you tell us about the classes? Because not only am I interested in signing up, I think other people might be interested. Because yeah. it's awesome that you get a chance to learn how to do it. So tell us about those and kind of how we can get involved. Yeah, the, the key thing with that is like a lot of we, we when we started off, you know, we heard a lot of people say, "Hey, I want to make this. I don't know how." Or uh, and people are, you know, you can find of course information, but people get a little bit overwhelmed with mm -hmm. it. So that's the whole thing about it. Is is one thing is teach people about what we do, but mm -hmm. also get them familiar with this whole process of making cheese and, and in a way how you can do that at home. And that's the whole setup. How we do it, it's we give people a hands-on experience with that. So people can come in. They can book uh, online on our website. That we have all the classes listed. We have now a fresh class where we uh, teach people about mozzarella and queso blanco. Mm -hmm. We have a butter-making class. So they, they learn how to make butter plus and mix in all kinds oh. of flavors. And then we have an H cheese class, which is where we teach people how to make a, like a little baby Gouda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we take them. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? Why am so, I not in this class right now? So it's it's one of those things, and we we give them instruction. We give them a little presentation first about what's going to happen, uh, and then they are basically there at the table and little groups, and they do go through the instruction. We have an instructor with them, so they uh, if they get stuck, they you know will teach them. But it's really about you do it. Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing. And it's in a very informal character. So people, it's, it's kind of bring your own drink. Mm -hmm. So people can have a, you know, bring their own little wine or beer. This is just crazy. And, um, <laughs> it's, and so that's the whole setup. And then we at the end, we give them a little tour and they have that's the cool. opportunity to buy some cheese. Are as these well. free classes? No. <laughs> no, we cannot do it for free. Okay, because that would just be silly. Because <laughs> <laughs> then I would move into your building. So, But, uh, you know, the thing about it is what you can see is that, uh, and, and fees will uh, change as we, as we add more classes sure. to it, too. But everything is listed online. Mm -hmm. But it's a basically like a three-hour experience. So you come in, you get a presentation. We have a whole thing full of cheeses for you to eat. And, uh, Gotta go, everyone. <laughs> so... And uh, usually we have some meats with that, and then uh, and and on top of that you spend learning about how to make cheese. So it's it sounds awesome. awesome. It's like it's like an evening. Um, usually, typically it's an evening, and then uh, yeah, for three hours you spend time with us. My that husband great. and I will see you there. So. <laughs> You, you've you've made a fan. Oh, she, she already was a fan. Now and, she's a stalker. Uh, and I might bring cake. Can I bring cake? <laughs> yes. You said wine, right? Can I bring yeah. a little cake too? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, we uh, we invite people to bring the, uh, whatever they want to bring. You know, great. and 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 we don't do it only for this kind of classes. We also have more and more companies now doing private classes, mm -hmm. so they Very can cool. sign up with a whole group, and uh, we're more than happy to organize for them. And 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 again, there, you know, they call us and whatever they want to bring in, uh, we can. We can. They can have like a standard class. We can uh, make change it a little bit for them. If they only have like a, a little bit of less, if they have some less time about mm -hmm. how to do it, you know, we can kind of sort things out for yeah, them. Yeah. Very cool. cool. Yeah. Well, um, Fons, uh, we really appreciate um, kind of opening up the world of cheese to us, and we certainly highly recommend. I mean, from our perspective, uh, watchers and listeners going out. But for for anyone who hasn't tried it, why should Indy get out and buy Tulip Tree Creamery products? Well, it's, you know, if you want to taste something a little different and you still want to taste a local product, uh, I think that's the key thing is, like, uh, be amazed with some of our uh, cheeses, which we make over here. And they're recognized in the whole nation. We won some great awards. Last year we mm -hmm. had the Best Food Award 
um, for us, you know, which was uh, we, we picked up in San Francisco. That's national, guys. It's That's national. national. Yeah, and then we had several awards in the ACS with the American Cheese Society. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you have a local, national, uh, award-winning uh, line of products here, and the cheeses are really very different than your regular cheddar or Colby. Right. And uh, not that there's something wrong with those, but it's like if you want to go for something a little different, you know, if you're having a group of people over and you want to serve them something special, something local, mm-hmm. um, we have a great offering with products, and it fits into any line. And if you're not sure, you can always contact us. You know, if you say, you know, I have a group of people coming in, I'm not sure what I would I would love to bring you cheeses, but I I know you know. And then we ask him, say, well, do they love product? Do they love stinky ones or mm. a little bit <laughs> milder? You know, what kind of age limit is there? And then we say, okay, well, probably these kind of cheeses would be a great way to go for. You're customizing the cheese experience. They yes. could tell you what kind of wine they're going to drink, <laughs> and then you could say what kind of cheese would go good. With t- Pairings and things, right? Uh, yeah, Laura has a whole list of things I think where she combines stuff. Do you want to uh, shout out to Laura? She's here, but not. At this table with us, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we have uh, the whole pairing with uh, you know for uh, for what kind of cheese goes well with mm-hmm. what Perfect. kind of wine. So I love it. Yeah. So uh, quickly, we can uh, connect to Tulip Tree Creamery on the website tuliptreecreamery.com, Twitter Tulip Tree Cheese, on Facebook Tulip Tree Creamery, and Instagram Tulip Tree Creamery. Yeah, you, you got it all nailed down. Good brand points across the board. Uh, final note is to I'd ask you to say one thing to uh, entrepreneurs uh, of startup companies that are, are really wanting to get into the food industry here in Indianapolis. What word of wisdom would you give them? Big thing I think is uh, really prepare. It's not going to be easy. Uh, you know, really prepare. Mm-hmm. Do your homework, and uh, it's going to take a lot more time than you think. Be prepared. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Fonz. And uh, yes, we certainly you. appreciate your time and your passion towards uh, uh, really committing to a, a great Indianapolis success story. And we wish you all the all the luck in the world. We thank really you. do. And uh, we're certainly going to grab a little bite here or there. I'm going to take all the cheese from you before you leave. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a cage match in here. Thanks so much, Fonz. Thank and, you, Fonz. And, and congrats to your success. Thank you. All right, uh, we're going to be coming up and talking to our mascot, uh, Paul Poteet, coming up right after this.